Hey LAN Party Gamers, today I'm going to talk to you about something a little bit different again. This is our classic Super Nintendo kiosk. And I'm not talking about a SNES classic you might only be able to find on eBay. No, I'm talking about my childhood Super Nintendo that uh, we made into this kiosk. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour and how we got all the parts to, to build this uh, for free, basically. So uh, let me show it to you. Now a brief history, the Super Nintendo was the first gaming system I ever had. Uh, I was born in 87, so I was a little too young for the original NES, which came out uh, before I was born. But by the time I was about three years old, the Super Nintendo uh, had great popularity, and that was the system for me. My first platformer that I ever beat was Super Mario World, and I can get through it now with Star Road in about 12 minutes uh, with some uh, pretty good speedruns here done in-house just among our friends to see who could beat it fastest. I always get a little caught up on Bowser, but that's okay. Uh, now, what we've got on the rest of this thing might be pretty obvious to some who frequent GameStop back in the day. The main chassis of this unit is actually an Xbox 360 display from GameStop. This is the display that they had from the launch of the Xbox 360 till they retired the display when the Xbox One came out. Uh, we help GameStop out with their midnight releases here in San Diego where we bring out systems so people can play revisions of games when their new uh, counterparts come out. So if a new Call of Duty comes out we might bring COD 4 in and do some speedruns or do some uh, 2v2 matches on PC. And in return, because we keep helping them out with that, they give us posters and from time to time they throw us what would normally have gone in the garbage like this unit here. So when our friend at GameStop dropped the kiosk off here at the SELHQ, we took a quick look at it and thought, well, what can we possibly put in this that only supports two controllers? It didn't take very long for us to realize that the Super Nintendo was the perfect fit. And with a little bit of drumming, we were able to get it in here and uh, the cables lined up with the controller area perfectly. And without it having to compete in the console cubby for room uh, and screen real estate on the projector or to uh, <laughs> keep people from playing the Steam games on the TV, this has got its own place and it's got more play time than ever being here in its own kiosk. People are freely able to come up at any time without having to wait for other games to finish or um, have to compete with other consoles uh, to get the playtime it deserves and it's really, uh, really accessible here on the kiosk. So uh, E-Waste, thankfully, uh, that we were helping out at one point, had this older LCD panel which actually accepts RCA plugs, which was amazing. Now the buttons for volume and stuff were kind of broken, but the power button still worked, the speaker still worked, and the RC jacks, RCA jacks on the back still accepted an input. So uh, we slapped it together. It actually had wall mounts built into the monitor. We put a little lean on it, and bam! We've got our very own uh, Super Nintendo kiosk right here in the living room. And people walk in and they say, oh wow, you've got all these computers, oh you've got Rock Band, you've got a recording studio in the backyard, and you've got a Super Nintendo kiosk, which is something that uh, I always take a lot of pride in building this thing. And, um, and if you notice one other thing, there's a little bit of a PlayStation 3 kiosk built into this. The basket on the front actually held uh, material to talk about the PlayStation 3, because they gave us both the PlayStation 3 kiosk as well as the Xbox 360 kiosk, and I said, well, I can't really use most of the PlayStation kiosk, but I can use the basket on the front to hold the games. And speaking of the games, we have some of my favorites, my classics here, and some uh, that people don't know as much well about. We've got uh, Super Mario World obviously playing right now, but uh, Mega Man X, which is something I actually bought after I was an adult on eBay, because I never had this one as a kid, so we wanted it in the collection. We've got Vortex, which actually was a Hollywood movies rental, but when they went out of business, we couldn't even return it, so that's that's ours now. Uh, Turtles in Time, which you would have seen us play on a Screen Lookers episode. We actually beat this with Joe uh, on, on the Screen Lookers, so that was awesome. Good old beat-em-up. Obviously, Super Mario Kart, 
Kirby's Avalanche. Now, if you are a Sega guy, you would remember this game as Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Uh, super fun and really competitive around here, actually. If you ever challenge anybody to Kirby's Avalanche, you will have a game on your hands. Uh, Mortal Kombat 1. Again, if you're a Sega guy, you had the blood. Super Nintendo had the sweat. Uh, no blood in this version of the game, which is pretty funny because it's a Nintendo console. Now we've got the Top Gear uh, racing game from Namco. We've got the Donkey Kong Country 1 for Super Nintendo. Home Alone 1, which again we played on uh, Screen Lookers during our holiday special. And Star Fox, uh, the original Star Fox here for Super Nintendo. A bunch of great games, a bunch of real fond memories. And uh, to people that haven't had a lot of opportunity to play classic consoles like this, this is a really inviting way to get people to try out a little bit of Nintendo history without having to worry about emulators, ROMs, or buying a Nintendo Classic. Uh, they could just walk right up, turn it on, and we're here playing Super Mario World 2018. So uh, yeah, if you're if you're wanting if you're out of one of our lands and you want to challenge somebody to some Mario Kart or some uh, Kirby's Avalanche. It's here, it's just waiting to be played, and it works beautifully, and I invite you to come and check it out. Um, if you have any questions about this, it's, it's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory, but feel free to leave them in the comments, and if you have a project like this that you might need help with, feel free to ask those down there too. Love it if you would subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you like classic consoles, and uh, we've got some more special projects in the works right now, so stay tuned on this channel or drop by the LAN, sandiegoland.net. Hope to see you there.